Hey, it's Aaron, this is my How Anarcho-Communism Works series, and today we're going to be talking about mutual aid and dual power, two fundamental concepts of anarchy. So without any further ado, let's get started. It sounds like anarchists and communists have a lot of lofty goals. Defund this, abolish that. But what are you trying to do right now? How are you going to accomplish any of that? Are you going to pick up a gun and charge at the White House? Because that sounds pretty LARPy. <laughs> no, no, no. Though armed conflict might be inevitable eventually, few of us actually want that right now. Storming the Bastille and beheading the monarchy is a macabre, romanticized version of what revolution looks like, when in reality, the real world of revolution is done on the ground. Not by shooting at each other, but by helping one another. What I'm talking about is mutual aid and creating dual power structures. Mutual aid is a concept popularized by anarchist philosopher Peter Kropotkin to describe how people work together to survive, and how cooperation across ancient human culture has been the driving mechanism behind our evolution. Quote, the mutual aid tendency in man has so remote an origin, and it is so deeply interwoven with all of the past evolution of the human race, that it has been maintained by mankind up to this present time, notwithstanding all vicissitudes of history. Mutual aid is a fundamental basic of anarchist philosophy, but in other words, it basically means that we want to help people. Feeding the needy, setting up community gardens, community kitchens, free stores, and even donating medical supplies, setting up free health and dental clinics, daycares, clothing drives, or getting out into the streets and actually just fixing potholes. This is essentially what is known as creating dual power structures, counter institutions to the current ones that provide services and goods cooperatively and push for revolutionary goals. And as the current system starts to stagger and collapse, we'll work together to ensure that these new institutions will take its place. I'm a revolutionary, and I believe, one way or another, this system is going to collapse. But armed conflict against the state just isn't where we're at right now. Given our numbers and lack of class consciousness among the people, doing such a thing would be absolute suicide. Instead, we want to build our communities and help them organize together to create the world that we want to see directly. It's basically a form of direct action, making real tangible change without going through the electoral system. It kind of sounds like you're just describing charity. Walmart does a hell of a lot more charity than any little anarchist organization ever has. Well, that's debatable. Though some corporations have donated to charity and provided assistance, this is usually set up as a PR stunt and can easily just be a tax write-off for them. But that is interesting. Let's look for a second at the differences between mutual aid and charity, or solidarity versus charity as some like to put it. Dean Spade, a radical activist and writer, made several different comparisons between the fundamental characteristics of solidarity and charity, such as, First of all, most importantly, in solidarity, we give things away without expectation, while under charity, they impose eligibility criteria for services that divide people into deserving and undeserving categories. If you need goods or services, they usually require that you're sober, or have a certain family status, or have certain immigration status, or no outstanding warrants, or even if you have a job. In solidarity organizing, the members are the ones who volunteer to work together to make the decisions. In a charity, the members are usually the donors and paid staff. In solidarity, there are open voluntary meetings with as many people as possible making decisions and doing the work. While in charity, it's a closed board meeting with governance by professionals or people associated with big institutions or big donors, programs operated by staff, volunteers limited to stuffing envelopes or other menial tasks occasionally, and the volunteers are not even a part of high-level decision-making. In solidarity, people participate voluntarily because of passion about injustice. Whereas in charities, people come looking for a job or want to climb some sort of social hierarchy and become important. 
Solidarity is fundamentally survival work that focuses on a wide array of different but obviously interwoven issues, such as anti-imperialism, gender equality, anti-capitalism, disability justice, climate change, while charity is siloed, single-use work serving a particular population or working on one area of policy reform completely disconnected from all other issues. These are all major problems and just a few from the list that I could have gone through. Wait a second, my anarchistic friend. I thought that you said that this would bring on a revolution, but really all you're doing is talking about giving people sandwiches. Why on earth would you think that would do anything at all? Well, we're not just giving people sandwiches, we're doing something called building dual power structures. Donating food or setting up free stores to give away clothes might seem like a small act to you, but it's far more important than most things we pay attention to in national politics. A minor adjustment in the marginal tax code or a 0.02 increase in the national GDP doesn't really affect you when you're struggling for food or if your home is falling apart. If you haven't been able to find a job and are facing eviction, a politician isn't going to help you with your rent, but a mutual aid group might be able to find some sort of solution. Too often we're lost in the spectacle of the national race to pay attention to what's actually important, like providing food to the single mother of four down the street who's struggling through this pandemic, or providing medical services to people who lost their job and would otherwise turn to the street for drugs. The thing about mutual aid is we're not looking at people who need the help as a charity case. We don't need to have a savior complex or paternalistic rescue fantasies that inevitably just make ourselves feel better. We realize that these are just regular people, like you or me. We want to make these people feel like they're more human because any one of us could be in that same situation at any time. And the interesting thing is that need is usually a temporary situation. Often, those who are in need today will be willing and able to help you tomorrow. Every person that you help will eventually want to help you help others. And as far as leading to a revolution, this is exactly what needs to happen. Regular people don't realize that they need to revolt because they've never been given enough time to sit down and actually even think about the problem. Through building these dual power structures and mutual aid, we actually provide the solutions that a lot of these people need without having them read a bunch of economic textbooks to see the benefits. They see the benefits when they get the goods and services they require to survive. That's why we say direct action gets the goods. This brings the people together and gives them something to fight for. They would see the benefits the system would have in their communities and they would want to help you spread those ideas. It's a way to spread class consciousness through direct action. And one day, when the system has collapsed and the brown shirts are marching down the street and you have no other choice but to finally take up arms and fight, your community will fight with you. And you'll have already created the structure of a new system for the old system to collapse into. Storming the Bastille might be the final step, but there's a lot of work left to be done before then. At least, that's the way I look at it. If you do get a chance, please check out all the links in the description box below. Hit that little bell button because you know they are not going to tell you when I release a new video. And make sure you're subscribed because they're unsubscribing people every single day. And also, make sure that you become a member of my Patreon because it's people like you that actually fund this show because no capitalist business is ever going to advertise on my channel. So, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.